What's up guys, John Haas, RN, founder of NRSNG, here to talk about preload versus afterload. This is a confusing topic, so let's come down to the whiteboard and I'm gonna explain it for you guys. Before we get started, we wanna talk about cardiac output. Remember, cardiac output is a measurement of stroke volume times heart rate. Those two things impact our cardiac output. So we need to know what then impacts stroke volume. First of all, it's impacted by preload. It's also impacted by afterload. And then it's impacted by contractility. All right, now that we understand where preload and afterload come into play, let's dive in a little bit more and understand what preload and afterload are. So to do that, I'm gonna draw a little heart. And this isn't a fancy heart, but this is basically a heart. We got our four chambers, we got our atria on top, our ventricles on bottom. So let's talk about preload. I want you to think of preload, excuse my handwriting, as a stretch. Preload is a stretch that occurs on these ventricles while they're filling. So during diastole, the ventricles are filling. As those ventricles fill, they stretch. That stretch is what we refer to as preload. The best way to think of this would be just kind of as like a balloon, all right? When you're filling up a balloon, that would be your preload. Think of it as the ventricles stretching out like a balloon. All right, let's draw our heart one more time and we'll talk about afterload. So here's our heart again, here's our ventricles down here. Coming out of our left ventricle is our aorta. So inside here, at the end of diastole, we have all this nice fresh blood. In order for this blood to get out of the ventricles and into the aorta and out to the body, we've got to squeeze that blood into the aorta. Afterload, is the resistance that this ventricle has to overcome in order to open that aortic valve. So in order for the ventricle to squeeze this blood and get it to come into the aorta, it has to overcome the resistance of our aortic valve. So think of afterload as a resistance, all right? So let's draw the heart one more time and let me show you how the whole process works. And we're gonna focus really just on the left side of the heart because that's where we measure most things and that's where we kind of see what's going on. So I'm gonna draw my aorta back on here and I'm gonna draw the aortic valve. And let's draw this valve right here too. So as blood comes in, so let's, this is oxygenated blood, so let's draw that oxygenated blood nice and red. So oxygenated blood comes down here from the left atria into the left ventricle. As that fills up, it creates a stretch on this left ventricle. Remember, stretch equals preload. All right, so as we're filling that up, as we're stretching this left ventricle, that's our preload. All right, diastole has ended and our left ventricle is completely full. All right. At that point, the ventricles start to squeeze during systole. That squeeze is in order to overcome this resistance of our, our aortic valve. As we get enough pressure there, as we overcome that resistance, we squeeze that blood out. So resistance equals afterload. It's the resistance that we have to overcome. All right, so with those two things in mind, let's talk about how we would measure this. Preload is measured with central venous pressure. All right, it's that stretch, it's that pressure, it's what's built up as we stretch those ventricles out. Afterload is measured with something called SVR, or systemic vascular resistance. All right, so we measure these things with a pressure, we measure these things with a resistance. Preload is central venous pressure. Afterload 
is systemic vascular resistance. Got it? All right, let me draw the heart one more time. And the last thing I want to talk about is a few things that would decrease or increase preload and a few things that would decrease or increase um, afterload. So preload, remember, it's this stretch, again, on our ventricles. All right, so what's a few things that would decrease our preload or decrease the amount of stretch that we have on these ventricles? So some things that would decrease preload would be decreased blood volume, things like hemorrhage, things that bring less blood back to our ventricle, all right? Things that would increase preload are things that would increase that volume that's there. So things like heart failure or renal failure. Things that bring more blood back to the, to the ventricles right here are going to increase that preload. All right, so what's going to decrease afterload? All right, what's gonna decrease the resistance that we have to overcome here. Think of things like low blood pressure. You know, we have less resistance right here. Our, our vessels aren't squeezing as tight. They're a little bit more loose. So that's gonna decrease that resistance that we have to overcome to open that and get that out into the body. What are things that would increase after load? What's gonna increase that that resistance or that pressure that we have to overcome to get blood out. Think about things like hypertension or vasoconstriction. These vessels are tight, right? It's, it's really tight, it's really rigid, so we've gotta overcome more resistance, create more pressure to get that open. All right, so once we understand preload, afterload, once we understand preload as this this, this stretch and once we understand afterload is this resistance that we have to overcome, let's go over here and let's draw one more time. Our cardiac output is impacted by stroke volume and heart rate. And stroke volume is preload, it's afterload, and it's contractility. So we talked about preload, we've talked about afterload, we've talked about what's gonna increase and decrease each of these. And we talked about that I really want you to understand that preload is a stretch and afterload is this resistance that we have to overcome. All right, so once we understand all of that, we can start looking at how we would impact uh, these two things. Okay, so the last thing I wanna talk about is how we would, would treat preload and afterload being too high or too low. So think about if our preload is too low. If we have a really low stretch right here. Remember that's due a lot of times to our blood volume. So if that's happening, if our preload is low, what are we gonna do? Well, we can give blood products. We can give fluids, all right? And we can add to this volume that's coming back to help increase that stretch, all right? If our preload is high, we got too much stretch, we got a lot of stretch going on here, we got a lot of volume coming in here, what are we gonna give? We can give things like diuretics, and we can give things like ACE inhibitors to help get some of this stretch down and decrease some of this volume that's coming back. All right, it's that simple. Now let's talk about how we would impact afterload. All right, so if our afterload is really high. All right, let's say this is this great, great, great pressure that we've got to overcome to get this blood out of here. How can we decrease that pressure or that resistance? How can we decrease that resistance? We can give things like vasodilators. All right, we can give things that are gonna make it a little bit easier, that are gonna open these valves up a little bit, open these vessels up a little bit, and that's gonna decrease the amount of resistance that we have to overcome to get this volume out of here. Does that make sense? We got this hose, it's really tight. Let's loosen it up a little bit, and all of a sudden it becomes easier to get that out of there. 
All right, let's say afterload is really low. All right, so it's too easy to get this blood out of here. And so we're just flowing all this blood out of here. We don't want to do that. So how do we make it a little bit harder? We get things like vasoconstrictors. All right, we get things to tighten these vessels up because they're too loose. And once we, so we got this really loose uh, tube, we tighten it up, make it a little bit tighter, and all of a sudden it becomes harder to get this valve open and get this blood out of there. All right, you guys, it's really that easy. If you think about preload as a stretch and you think about afterload as a resistance, then you just go back to your fluids, okay? You go back to, do I have too much fluid? Do I have too little fluid? Do I have too tight of a tube? Do I have too loose of a tube? And you just start thinking about, okay, what's my cause? What am I really dealing with? And how can I overcome that, all right? Preload, stretch, afterload, resistance you must overcome. That's all it is. Really focus on this left side of the heart. You guys can do this, you guys can figure it out. If you need more help with this, we've got lessons on hemodynamics, lessons on preload and afterload, lessons on contractility all within NRSNG Academy. Please come check it out. I want you guys to succeed. Now go out and be your best selves. Happy nursing.